Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here with Bish's RV, hanging out with the very first of our Bish's RVs. This is the first installment of a brand new series, the Wayfinder series, and this specifically is called the Go Play. It is a straightforward, no-nonsense series of uh, just conventional campers. They just, they, they check all the really important boxes. It's everything that matters, nothing that doesn't. You're not paying for any stupid fluff stuff. It's just basic camping. It's not silly, over-the-top, fancy glamping kind of stuff. Uh, we actually partnered up uh, with a, a member of the Jayco RV family to build these right here, and and uh, they run side by side down the same production line. Uh, we're, we're building X number per year. It will be a uh, first come first serve basis kind of thing. And these will actually be available to uh, basically be purchased online and then shipped to uh, w you know your local Bishes store if you like what you see. We will generally have them in hand and um, on the grounds at four of our locations for now and maybe expanding more in the future. But this is going to be a, uh, a very straightforward, very price aggressive series of campers where I'm seeing these things are coming in roughly the pricing of like used RVs. Contact your local stores to get details on that, by the way, because shipping costs can vary from place to place. Now we wanted to make this is, you know, camping made easy. And along with that, we, uh, there's just not really options. Like we've got, it's, it'll have roof solar prep. So if you want to add some solar, it will be ready. And you will see that demonstrated today, how it is capable of that. But the actual units uh, will basically just be straightforward, uh, carbon copy, cookie cutter punch outs of one another. Now we're, we're six foot nine tall inside. We have carpetless slide outs. We wanted to go with those easy camping things. Uh, we made sure that like, if you're stuck inside on a rainy day, there's plenty of outlets around the bunks for the kids to keep themselves entertained. Uh, we wanted to make sure we were nailing all the major things that you would need, use, see, feel, and touch every single day. And I'm really excited to go through this with you because here's the thing. This is what it looks like now. And right now it is very, very similar to some other things that are out there. But that's because we want to have a good basis, a good launch pad. We are depending on you folks to help guide us with this thing. Your input will help shape the development of this product. This can be an RV that you help design over time. So we need your comments. Everything you like, good, bad, ugly, or in between as we go. And apologies for a quick interruption here before we get going much further. Uh, the footage that you're watching is uh, from an RV show where we did a little bit of a soft launch on our Go Play series here. And there are some aspects, we already got like a uh a majority input saying you should do this or do that. So the product has actually already begun to evolve in some ways. Like the refrigerator originally was going to be a gas electric two way fridge with no swaptions. People said, I don't like that. And you will see that some of that will already be changing. So it is very possible when you check out our Wayfinder website, if you see uh, where we have some of these Go Play RVs listed, there may be some pictures and things that will supersede uh, anything that you might see in the footage today and be a little different. So you might hear me say something, and at the time it was true, but since then some things have changed. So keep in mind, you folks are shaping this product. This is an evolving, moving target. We will always do our best to kind of bring you the RV that, frankly, <laughs> just give the people what they want. So once again, just to preface this so that you have proper expectations as you kind of absorb this with your, you know, your eye nuggets there. This is not intended to be the be all end all biggest, flashiest, fanciest like this. You know, it's it's not a Brinkley Model G, folks. It's uh, a simple, straightforward family camper. And we have um, eight floor plans in this Go Play series uh, under the Wayfinder group that will, uh, what we actually did is we statistically looked and in the world of conventional, AKA stick and tin campers, we identified eight floor plans that represent 70% of all RV sales. So generally speaking, we've got something here for nearly everybody, but not absolutely everybody. And this is without a doubt intended to be something that is what I call smarter class camping that does good features without going over the top. Like we're six foot nine tall and that extra ceiling height adds, uh, it can mean a taller shower, it means taller cabinets, it means taller slides and bunks. That three extra inches versus industry standard makes a big difference, you know? Uh, the uh, air conditioner up here, we've got centrally, uh, centrally rather, ducted air, uh, whose vents are both vented and louvered. They can turn, they can close, you can put the air wherever you want, or you can do kind of what I've demonstrated here. You can uh, open this up, and this is called your cold air dump, which is a, uh, anytime you hear the word dump in something, it's obviously very glorious. But you have your choice between basically centralizing or non-centralizing your air. So if it is just a crazy hot day, and you've got everybody sitting here in the living room, and we're all heating each other up, 
uh, you can flip those blades open and just drop your cold air in here. You don't want to do that necessarily permanently. Um, if you remember back in, well, I mean, I don't, I've only heard the stories back in the seventies, some, uh, old cars with, uh, air conditioners on hot days would like spit snowflakes cause the, the condenser coils were freezing up. You know, theoretically you could do that here, but you got to kind of go out of your way to screw that up. Um, we also know you folks don't like carpet. So we made something without carpet kind of, uh, again, at your discretion. And again, this is design designed to be a very baseline, straightforward, no nonsense kind of product. This is not intended to, to be uh, everything. And um, your input is literally going to help shape this. Now understand, uh, like, like here's the thing, right now, just because of uh, what we had available for supplier reasons, right now we're looking at a two-way fridge only. However, um, we're not necessarily opposed to opening up other avenues like 12 volt fridges. I will, I'll go first. I would really like to see this have a 12 volt fridge and at least an option for at least 200 watts of solar, which we've actually done a demonstration of here on this RV today. I'll clarify that as we go. But if you have specific input on that, you're like, I like this, I don't like this, tell us so that we can continue to make the RV that you want to take home. Uh, cabinetry is all pocket screwed, by the way. Um, this is called lumber core, which is like lumberjack heavy metal music. But what it means is that there is a real wood core in the cabinet styles and rails, and they do screw together. Um, there is a, uh, uh, MDF, uh, basically fascia on that. And it is a sticker app, but that's literally the same kind of, um, cabinet construction that you'll find all the way up through things like a, like a North point, a Montana and Alliance paradigm. Um, so, you know, for an, a, a more basic, you could definitely, I think, say entry level camper, it gets the job done. We did, um, again, for cost reasons, evidently, they went with a single curtain here. I really like how, like, Jayco's good about this, doing separate curtains. That's a very low-budget thing. I'd like to see a second curtain put in there so each bunk curtain could be pulled individually. Um, up top here, the these are uh, breeze windows. You'll see those on the, uh, the outside of the RV. Um, I kind of like them, I think, sometimes over here on the door side of the camper, but... Uh, I don't know. At the same time, I also don't dislike having uh, the, the centrally located power outlets, household and USB, and the little phone pocket there. Um, whether it's, you know, not, not every bunkhouse is just about sleeping kids. Sometimes people like to have some adult friends with them. And I don't know about you, but I've always got my phone by me uh, at bed. Also, little things like we didn't want the ancient dinosaur um, analog thermostat. Just simple little details like that. Now, you might notice how the toilet has a piece of tape closing it off. That's because here at the RV show where this is being debuted, um, that is not the deposit that we are looking for. So <clears throat> keep that in mind. Uh, what is nice, though, obviously, you saw there's some very good hip, elbow, and shoulder room. And this is something I like. I was really excited to see. Um, if you've seen my videos where I've done um, some J-Flight travel trailers, which is a very close cousin to this, the ones built out of Indiana have only a mirror on the wall. The fact that this actually has a medicine cabinet, just smart details. And again, smart money spend right here versus uh, a power vent fan and a skylight. We basically put the power vent fan in the shower as a skylight to kind of do two things with one, have one less hole literally in your roof, and it still gets the job done. Um, now, that is obviously in a more price sensitive trailer. That is the more conventional four inch fart fan. If Little things like that, though, that screwdriver work, if that's something that you wanted us to update, upgrade, we definitely have the capacity to do some stuff like that. And again, with the six foot nine ceiling, the skylight needing to be a little bit bigger is much, much less of an issue in a camper like this. I was actually very happy with that bathroom. A lot of times when um, anybody starts developing a more price sensitive RV, a lot of times the bathroom really gets uh, left out and forgotten. And you can see we didn't do that here. One other low budget thing I would personally do um, although I, uh, you know, and, and your feedback can help here instead of the pedestal style, uh, dinette legs, I would go with those folding legs, just the simple lightweight folding legs. They look sort of like ironing board legs ish kind of, and I'd have a free floating table. Cause then I could take the table outside for picnic time. I could still fold it down into a sleeper. I could use it over here, uh, like a Dinofa table. You know, I could do whatever I wanted with it. That is something that um, I personally really like. Now the windows are tinted, but to give you a little bit of privacy, you see that we do have those uh, pull down blackout pleated shades right there. 
Uh, dinette folds into a sleeper. There's storage below that. And as long as we're looking at the storage, you've got six foot nine of pantry space, floor to ceiling pantry over here. Now it is a smaller oven because we do have the auto detect converter below it. And what that means is um, whether you have uh, conventional lead acid or if you decide you want to add some solar to this, you want to add some lithiums, that converter can work for you. You don't have to like replace stuff like that. And uh, overall, I mean, the total drawer space, the, the taller cabinets allowing for extra storage space. Um, for what this is, as a conventional family camper, a very close cousin to like a J-Flight 267, but multiple, multiple thousands of dollars less, I ain't mad at it. I ain't disappointed with this whatsoever when you start comparing the budget on them. Again, because shipping can be different from location to location, my best recommendation is always contact your local store to see what it would run to get delivered to that store because it could literally be thousands of dollars different. Um, anyway, moving on here. It's kind of funny. Seems like fewer and fewer RVs are still using some variety of stereo head um, as opposed to radio head, but they, uh, you know, they make music, whereas this just plays music, something a little different there. Sorry, I've got the dumbest references. And this is something um, I, I was really pushing for, and I'm really glad it happened. A full window in the entry door. Now, again, here in a budget series, it doesn't have the shade on it, but a shade can be snapped right up in place. It's only a couple bucks. It's not hard to do. Something else I noticed I thought was interesting is up here, there's just like a, a venting skylight if you want to get some airflow rolling through. It's not a power fan, but with this having a um, a, a wood truss constructed roof structure, uh, what that means is the roof is basically hollow. We could piggyback power off of those lights, and we could even wire a fan into that if you were so inclined. Now, I mentioned something earlier. Um, this RV, uh, when it, uh, you know, in production, will not actually uh, have a solar package available on it. Um, the local store where we're at, uh, everybody and their brother dry camps out here. So they wanted to demonstrate how we, as Bish's RV, could we installed this uh, 30 amp controller and 200 watt go power solar package up on the roof. By default, this RV will just say like, you know, solar controller, solar prep here, and it will have the roof prep plug up top. Um, down the line, and this is again where your input can make the difference. Down the line, I would really like this to see at least an optional 200 watt solar package minimum, if not standard, but that's my two cents. And I would really like some input from you folks. And again, keeping in mind, we will have, uh, you know, some other options and opportunities uh, available down the line there. Now, something I thought was neat, and keep in mind, we've got some various uh, decorations out here because I know everybody keeps their French press uh, coffee serving tray right next to their bedside. I know that's what everybody does, right? Um, household outlets on both sides of the bed. Wide open side stand so you don't feel claustrophobic. Although, you do have a sharp kind of corner right there. You might want to kind of foam pad that up. But if you notice, that sharp corner doesn't overlap with the bed. So it's not exactly, um, you know, easy to catch. But I know I, I'm klutzy enough to be able to do it. And I really like those. So this thing right here uh, is dual purpose. If you uh, push it flat, it's a wireless phone charge pad. But then you've got two USB plugs, uh, if you pop it up, that are available there. I think that's really cool. I really wish there was a second one um, over there on that side of the bed. There is not. But did you notice that those are uh, venting windows? And I like how they're all fully framed out. We did still manage to put a little bit of nice uh, eye candy in this thing. Now you may have noticed, uh, hopefully I remember, if I forgot to put a note on screen about the uh, the size of the mattress there, leave me a little comment, ask me the question. I'll get that filled in. I thought I, uh, sorry, I, wow. I, I, this just totally fell apart. I was doing really good until now. <laughs> and of course, road mode. You will see the majority of the GoPlay series as I get more videos out, as more of these become available. Um, that is something that we tried to be uh, fairly cognizant of. We wanted to make sure that these were very functional. And sometimes that means travel stop functional or not even just travel stops. Like if your RV's in storage and you want to get in here and you want to pack up the fridge, you want to pack up the kitchen, you want to throw the kids duffel bags back in the bunks or whatnot. We wanted to make sure you could do that. One thing I noticed on this floor plane though, because this is like as small as you can really make a, uh, a bunkhouse model with a super slide and a private front bedroom. That's the goal of this floor plane is to give you the most space and the least length possible. 
the bathroom door and the slide out will overlap. So if you want bathroom access in transit, you're going to have to make sure you leave this door open. And my recommendation is get some kind of bungee cord that like you hook to something or like a, uh, a rubber stopper, uh, you know, down there, something like that little door stop so that that door doesn't go swinging around and banging into everything in transit. And back to front, uh, with the slide closed still, you technically lose access to these two little pantry tainment doors, but if push really came to shove, you could always reach around and reach through there. Uh, you know, if, if you pull in late at night and, uh, I mean, you don't even have to open the slide. You don't even have to unhook from your vehicle. You can just pull in late at night. Uh, everybody can go to bed, wake up in the morning, get some coffee and you get the kids outside, get them uh, preoccupied and then go play. Now, sliding back outside here, taking a look at the uh, the weights and the measures. What kind of vehicle are you going to need to tow this one around? Thankfully, you are not going to need the Grave Digger Monster Truck. Uh, generally speaking, looking at those specs, I, I do think calling it uh, in the realm of half-ton towable is reasonable. Now, that is a bit of a loaded statement because not all half-tons are created equally. So, uh, we always want to check the individual specs on your vehicle versus every trailer that you look at with us so we can make sure we're putting your safety before the sale. So, uh, again, this is the Go Play, but it's a member of the Wayfinder series. Wayfinder would be like the brand, like some people call it Jayco or Keystone. Wayfinder is the name of our brand of RVs, and this is the Go Play entry, and that is our Wayfinder symbol right there. You actually see that uh, all over our various Bishes RV logos. Now, um, up front here, you see you've got the power tongue jack. We have a uh, power awning with lighting, and that's actually an easy tilt awning. Uh, I'll demonstrate that in a second, but with two fingers, you can tilt that sucker down and get some rainy day runoff, which is uh, awful darn handy. Um, if we uh, work our way back through here, you see a nice, large uh, uh, baggage door on both sides of the RV, giving us a big, full, true pass-through. Because uh, as an RVer myself, I can tell you that's one of the things I was excited to hear is like, you know, uh, you, you need space, whether it's your hitches, your wheel chocks, all of your kids stuff, whatever the case may be. Now, obviously, we got the awning out today because we've got all these fun little streamers hanging from everywhere, Rebecca, but whatever, you get the idea. Uh, and as I said, we have an easy adjust awning with just two fingers. Oh, gosh, that one needs loosened up a little bit. There we go. Of course, having these little chicken arms doesn't doesn't help any. But uh, here's a pro tip, by the way. When you push this up, don't push right here. It will chomp and bite a chunk out of your hand. Ask me how I know. But if you leave the awning cranked like that, what's kind of cool, when you close the awning the with just the button because it's a power awning, it will straighten itself out. It won't screw itself up. One thing, you know, even though this is our series of trailers, there's still things on this I would like to see done a little bit differently. And once again, I know I've said this a bunch of times, we are aggressively looking for your feedback on here. How can we make this uh, a better trailer that you would like to take home, that you would like to use with your family? And for me, I would say either bring the speakers down or just get rid of them. I'm really, I'm, I'm kind of a person who's really not a super duper fan of outside speakers on RVs anymore. I just, you know, with all the, the various Bluetooth things that we have and the fact that they sound better and you can keep them at your table and not blow the neighbors away. I'm just kind of, I'm one of those people. I'm sort of, well, I mean, no pun intended. I'm in that camp as it were. <laughs> now, one thing we did here, um, what is the correct outside cooker? You know, is it the two burner stove? Is it a griddle? Like nobody quite seems to agree. So what we wanted to do is create something that everybody could kind of, if we couldn't please everybody, we could give them a way to, uh, to basically please themselves. So having a little mini fridge outside for the uh, bottled water and the barley pop, dad's medicine cabinet right there, that's always useful. But instead of like a griddle or a stove or something that not everybody agrees on, you said, you know what everybody likes? Everybody likes storage. It's almost like when you're talking to Donkey and Shrek, it's like everybody likes parfaits, you know. Threw some extra power outlets out here if you want to keep, like I said, a Bluetooth speaker, charge your phone up, whatever the case may be. Um, over to the right of the fridge, you see that black little circle. Uh, it does have a little high-pressure cold water sprayer port out here so you can hose the kids off. Or, you know, uh, fellas, if, you're, uh, if you're, your wife is taking a nap in the uh, camping chair, enjoying the sun, you can spray her off, and then you better get inside and lock the deadbolt because she's going to come in fire and brimstone. She's going to kill you. <laughs> uh, up top here, we wanted to make sure you could get up to the roof, 
But the thing is, this has a PVC roof membrane. Now, you still have seals around the place, so it's a reduced maintenance roof. It's not a zero maintenance roof. Don't let anybody ever tell you something like that. But we did uh, prep it for a little telescopic ladder mount right there because, once again, some people like ladders on RVs and some people really don't. So we kind of felt like that was going to be a way that everybody could sort of have the thing that they wanted. And I really like the fact that this does have those uh, tinted windows to help keep the sunshine out, to help maintain a little bit more privacy here. Now, swinging around the backside here, it's, it's a little more plain vanilla over here because you spend less time over here. We wanted to make sure we were putting the features and the, the value of the RV where you were going to be and spend the most of your time. Uh, we did want to make sure that you had some simple things. Like, I like how all of our water docking and our electrical docking is uh, kind of separate over here. Um, uh, I know enough about RVs to know that having... A, the RV's electrical plug near uh, a water plug uh, or water inlet, you know what I mean, is not a uh, it's not a major deal. But I know that it also doesn't look like it, it just it looks concerning because we all know how well water and electricity play ball together. Right. So, uh, you know, we, we did want to try to separate those as best we could. What do you think about the overall look, the color palette? Um, you know, what what do you like? What would you want to see change? Again, your input going to help drive this thing here. And the magnet holdbacks on these baggage doors making uh, getting in and out of these much, much easier so you don't have to, like, you know, constantly juggle them open with your head. And you don't have those cheap plastic clips that get brittle and break in the sun. And one last thing here. Um, if you watch a lot of my videos, you know I greatly dislike the phrase four seasons campers because no RV truly is. But we did want to give you some measure of protection. So that PVC roof membrane really helps reflect a lot of the extra sunlight. Uh, but down here, that is an enclosed and forced hair uh, heated belly. So uh, if it does get a little bit chilly overnight and comes back warm tomorrow, you're going to be okay. So thank you once again for tuning in. Really appreciate it. And again, your feedback will help drive this product. Um, like I said, right now it's simple, straightforward. Do you think we should look into the idea of 12 volt fridges? Should we look into some factory solar? We don't want to get this series too crazy, too out of control because we will be introducing new series of RVs in the future. This is going to be the baseline. Everything is going to build up from here. And uh, I, I really can't wait to see what's coming next. Until next time, take care, stay safe. Have fun and go play, everyone.